Psychedelic Sundays. Psychedelic Sundays. Psychedelic Sundays. Psychedelics are re-emerging into public awareness in a big way. Scientific studies that were once taboo or illegal are now being performed and shared around the world. These studies show that most psychedelics are not only safe and non-habit forming, but also have incredible healing potential when used in a proper context. One idea that came out of an involvement with psychedelic uh, substances, my idea because the idea of fractals will serve as a basis for much of what I'm going to talk about. What all this indicates is a set of ideas that I want to share with you that are a slightly different tack than my normal lectures. My normal lectures deal with the psychedelic experience as a generalized and uh, historical phenomenon. but. This effort at communication is slightly more personal in that it's an effort to impart one idea that came out of an involvement with psychedelic uh, substances. My idea, it is idiosyncratic. It is a psychedelic idea, certainly, but it's only one of the uh, an infinite possible set of such ideas. And the reason I spend time on it to communicate it to a group of people like this is because I think it can serve as an example of psychedelic ideas uh, generally, how they're formed, how they operate, and what's so great about them. And perhaps with an element of ego, I think that this idea intrinsically has an, an elegance that makes it worth pursuing. What's important to know about fractals is that they have the peculiar property of uh, presenting the same appearance at all scales. Oh yeah, it's about perspective and I think that the deeper you look into mechanisms of reality the the more beauty you'll find even in the darkest of situations that you can view these mechanisms that make life the way they are or the way that things function in the universe that can still bring you joy that can still show you that beauty even in the most terrible times and then psychedelic Sundays which is a monthly show and hopefully I can keep on doing that and it's basically, I think, you know, I haven't, when was the last time I did psychedelics? Probably a year ago, I did some mescaline and it wasn't even that much. But uh, then prior to that, it was like three years since, yeah, three since I did um, shrooms. But with, with that stuff, and I was having this, the same weird loopy conversation that I'm having now with you with my other friend. And I was telling her about that, and she was talking about microdosing. And I was like, and what my thoughts were on that, I was like, well, going back to that whole kind of psychedelics are placebo effects, that whatever your attention is and what you think is going to happen, uh, I forgot some, some guy kind of just arbitrarily explained it this way. It's like set and setting is 90% of what you are going to experience on a psychedelic trip. So, so the other 10% is dosage. As I was kind of mulling that more over in my head, is like one of the most powerful psychedelic experiences I had was, which I, I frame as the psychedelic sex trip that I had with my, with my uh, partner in crime. At that time, she was like my best friend, Sheena. And um, we only took half an eighth of shrooms. And they're pretty good shrooms though. But I mean, I've taken like, seven grams of shrooms like <laughs> i think that's the most i've ever taken but i'm taking like real heroic dosage of shrooms but that was like the most significant even though like the dosage wasn't that much but it was who i was with it was the environment that i was there 
and then allowing myself to to go and and then us kind of like the whole experience was us merging our consciousness and then like kind of like our lives unfolding before us and being all right with us eventually in the near future you know going our separate ways which all happened and it was just this weird experience so going back to that microdosing it it all depends like uh i'm torn like i see the benefits of it and i have read a lot of that that research and if it helps uh, people then yeah i'm totally for it but part of it is like gentrification of stuff <laughs> lack of a better word of how you know yoga used to be this thing for spiritual enlightenment and you know this this practice that you did for for your own inner inner development but then now it's like yoga is something people do so they can post it on instagram you know and one time douglas rushcraft on a team team was kind of talking about this and you know like psychedelics now is like something that these tech giants take so that they could be, perform better in business. And that's not, in my opinion, the ultimate goal of that is not that. The ultimate goal of that is not to make you a better player of this game, is the ultimate goal of that is to realize that this is a game, that perception is the software, that reality is this hardware that we don't get a real, real honest glimpse of, but on rare, uh, strange art or strange mathematics is the only time we can glimpse the hardware of that, that is reality. And that we're constantly creating this software of society, of our perception of everything and realizing that, that everything is whether we were programming or it's getting programmed for us and that when we give up our attention when we give up our awareness it's not like some mysterious thing that someone's controlling us is just this god that's behind there or it's the illuminati or some elite is that we were because of laziness of blindness or whatever it is we're giving up our our attention and we're being programmed by someone else but it's always our choice we're it ultimately comes down to that we're the one that makes the grass green. We're the one that controls our interaction with reality, with perception. And like when the, the buck stops with each individual's minds, perceptions, consciousness. But then ultimately there's this weird paradox of it is that it's all eternity and connected and there's the, the oneness of everything. That beauty that leaks out everywhere. Which is hard to square in a Western mind. No, I agree. And first off, specifically with oneness, because that that piece drives me to the brink all the time, thinking about how absolutely everything is interconnected. Um, but going back to dosage, set, and setting, I completely agree with that because uh, I this year has probably been my most experimental year with psychedelics and any drugs for that matter. Um, but for in the very beginning when I was doing a little bit of acid, it was uh, not a positive experience for me. It was actually very overwhelming. Um, and I later found out that that's because of the intention of myself and the people around me. It wasn't for growth. It wasn't, it was It was for fun. It was the, the scene I was in, people were just doing acid because it made them happy, you know, or doing acid because they happen to be at a party or just because other people are doing it. Hey, I want one. And the same for mushrooms, except mushrooms are generally a bit more pure, a bit more natural. But as far as acid goes, I was around a lot of people that were just doing acid all the time and weren't really using it for any thought practices or weren't really, you know, they didn't have good intention behind it. And so for a while, as far as that placebo effect, um, I was doing a, a bit of molly pretty frequently, actually. And for a little bit, I would tell my friends, you know, they, they want me to do acid, they want me to do acid. And I would say, you know, I, I haven't had a good experience recently on it, and I don't think I want to. And eventually it got to the point where I would be on a lot of molly and I'd say, OK, fine, I'm in a really good mood. I'll go ahead and try some. And it was kind of a, a rule of mine for a little bit to 
only do acid when I was already on a lot of molly, so I would stack things and that's candy flipping. But so I, I always had a good experience because I was already in a positive mindset. And so as long as I was already in that peaked positive mindset from the MDMA, would my acid trip be be viable? And uh, any any time even after that, that I had acid on its own, um, I tend to self-reflect way too much. And so if I'm in a bad environment, I'm with people I'd rather not be around or I have uh, some sort of turmoil that I'm dealing with. Uh, it, was, it was very distressing to be on acid thinking about that all the time and knowing the right answer but not acting on it or um, knowing knowing what I have to do, knowing what I need to get out of a situation and having everyone around me telling me, no, no, you don't, but I'm on acid and so it's consuming me and I just continue to think about you know what needs to be done without being able to act on it. That is a very easy way to get stuck in a bad trip. Yeah, can, candy flipping for sure. I mean, that's kind of in my own development. My practice of when I was doing shrooms kind of regularly um, was to hippie flip, which is the same thing where you do E and then you do the shrooms. And for the same various reasons, you know, it's to kind of um, grease the wheels in a sense to being more open, empathetic, so that you can accept uh, whatever messages that were coming through in a sense. Um, kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I would always have this experience to of these, these moments when I would do a lot of psychedelics at raves or whatever. And kind of going to what you were saying was that, and it goes to the attention of everybody there that was doing it. And it was, I think just generally speaking, the attention of everybody doing there was to distract and to escape, not to to unreveal or to get deep, you know? Um, it's all about the lights or dancing, which which dancing is a form of, of meditation, art and, and, and prayer and everything. But in, in that setting, you know, it's it's kind of like oh look at this girl looks so good or or everybody has these glow sticks and it's all this kind of like surface level distractions to in one sense if you don't want to to go and do that deep work of your own mind because it's, it's not easy and nor is it ever going to be like oh okay i'm perfect and i've gained enlightenment and that's it i'm done no, it's a process and it's a, it's a continuous process. I mean, the only time you're probably eventually done is when you die, <laughs> when it's game over. But uh, so <laughs> so when I would be at these raves, I, I would be like, what are we doing? Like this, this is what is this is it? No, uh, <laughs> it's it's like this dream I had once where I, People were stuck in these kind of uh, VR goggles and like, kind of matrix -y, And I was just like, get out of there. Like, you don't you know what you're doing? <laughs> you're, you're plugging yourself in. And I would feel this at raise. I'm like, you guys are not using it properly. <laughs> and I would just like bug out. And uh, <laughs> finally, the, I went to this three day rave and um, I did acid mushrooms and e and it was kind of funny because we were supposed to get mushrooms before the this uh, music festival that's called synergy and my friends were like oh we're all calling everybody and i was like oh we could get it and then my my guy was having problems and we had to leave and i was like you know what fuck it i guarantee that i will be able to find it there no problem and so that that was my first mission right and sure enough i've the guy with the backpack that looked like a Grateful Dead person, that's my guy. <laughs> so I made friends with him, smoked a, smoked a blunt with him. I was like, hey, do you have mushrooms? He's like, yeah, I want them candy. I'm like, oh, cool. And so he gave it to me. And, and so it was kind of funny because at this time I was taking mushrooms a lot. So he gave me an eighth of mushrooms, right? And I just, it was candy. So I kind of just, just ate them right away. I was already there. I figured, okay. And then... Then he's like, oh, do you want anything else? And I'm like, well, what else do you have? And then he was like, oh, I got a triple stack of this. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll buy a couple of those. I'm like, okay, I'll save this for, for later. 
And then I'm like, what else do you have? And then he's like, I got sure, some acid. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. And then I was like, oh, I'll get a couple of those and I figured I'll take them later. And he's like, nah, it's liquid. So if you wanted to buy it, you gotta take it now. And I'm like, oh shit, why did I just sculpt down the whole eighth of mushrooms right now? Like shit. I was like, fuck it, I got three days. Let's do it. <laughs> so he's like, stick out your tongue. And then he dropped it. And I kid you not, like this, it was really, really good acid. Because once it hit my tongue, it like it had its own energy. And it was like this, like it was like electricity that hit my tongue and then it started spreading its way through my whole body. And then I had like this sense, like if I was Mario and I got ate a mushroom and I grew taller. I was like, boop, 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 boop. And then I'm like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> I was walking around, I'm like, oh, holy shit. And then like later, as I was like peeking, I was like, I need to calm down. And then I like ate some of the, the ecstasy. <laughs> I was like, I just need to mellow myself out. I'm getting too crazy. <laughs> I need to mellow myself out with ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that works. Take some ecstasy. I like, need to calm down. <laughs> oh, good times though. <laughs> yeah, for for me, uh, Molly ended up being a way to just combine all of my different sides because I, I have different facets of myself that, you know, Gov is where I generally I'm the best at articulating things. I, I do a lot of thought. I actually get things done. I'm very structured. And the other sides of me are, are very, very, very different. And so whenever I was on Molly, it felt like, um, I'm trying to think if it's a scene in a movie, but it's like all of all of the pieces are all apart and it's kind of like a, a projection or a mirror. And then they all kind of slap together as if they were elastic. And whenever I'm on Molly, it feels like all of my pieces come together and I'm suddenly, you know, the avatar. All of my ancestors, all of my different pieces of myself bond together and I become some sort of God tier um, being. And so it got, it was, it was a tool for me definitely. And that's what I look back on it as now. And like you said, the journey never ends. So I'm, I'm obviously not enlightened, but I've, I've grown because of that tool and it's time to take a break from that tool. While I was on it, it became a way to exercise my brain, to exercise my personality, to exercise who I am and actually grow a lot on that. Um, and I'm, I'm doing all of this now because I'm not going to be able to do the psychedelic panel tomorrow and I've got some things to do pretty soon here. But I figured we could jump into the whole drugs, brave scene, all of the, the craziness before you get to cover it tomorrow. Psychedelic Sundays. <laughs> you know, I think part of the problem or at least with me, and I, I notice it with other friends, like in the moment is like, oh my God, I realize everything and this and that. And like, this is what it have to be to be like a complete person or, or what meaning of life is. And then like, then there's this kind of like um, numbness thing. That's like the hangover of psychedelics, where it's not like you feel bad, like if you were drinking, but it's just like this, like this, like, uh, that's numbness crazy. of of yeah like you're just like floating around and like everything's a little duller <laughs> like like oh i found the secret of the world and now i'm back to normal setting oh, i don't like this it's like whatever and then you have to inevitably go and function and then it's just like oh okay all that realization and all that stuff i never really uh took a time to integrate that into my my being and it's just like okay then then what that really happens to most people i guess is the, it's the constant bombardment of oh i need to do a little bit more to get like to there but never really fully understanding that it wasn't necessarily the psychedelics it was that's what you know like what aldous huxley says you 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 cleanse the doors of perception and everything appears to man as it is infinite and so like where our normal setting of reality of how we 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 experience reality and, and our perception, like that's more the hallucination than when you're able to uh, scrub out all the malware of society, of your own personality, of of uh, family, of history or whatever. And then you, you're 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 on factory setting, and you're like, oh, everything's oh, okay. This is 
how everything is and this is where it's at <laughs> but if you don't do that kind of like integration part or that work part um it's it never you know it, it you gotta you gotta defrag your mind else everything runs like shit <laughs> well it's like you're walking through the world wearing sunglasses and it's sort of that idea that every time you experience something again and again and again it becomes more of a monotonous task and you experience less of it you know you're just going through the motions people that are older say that they think time passes faster um people that do their job every day think that you know their shift is going quicker or um just actions you're used to you don't recognize all of the details anymore because you're just kind of droning through it and so when you take psychedelics sometimes it's like you took off those sunglasses and you see all the colors and you see all the detail and suddenly all the motions are slower or you see different aspects of you know geometry in things you're experiencing that you wouldn't have otherwise and it gives you that fresh look that overwhelming stimulation that you encounter that when you come back into you know normal reality you see things normal again you're experiencing things and thinking about things on a slower scale because your brain is actually ticking faster while you're tripping that when you come back it's just kind of very dull like you said everything's just kind of wow and you don't really know how to interact with people very well because it's all just way too normal and you're back on this very very plain plane of existence I'm thinking about this and I was at this um, kind of webinar thing or I think it was part of science and non-duality and it's I forgot it was like something opening up the the heart or something like that and so like there's like um we do like this group meditation and then there's a special guest lecture and we're just talking about different things and it kind of goes back to this this article i read one time and it was kind of talking about this for lack of a better word i was just i was in my mind called in the gentrification of a psychedelics or meditation or whatever and so in the article they talk about these people doing yoga right and so they go in their studio and they're doing yoga and have their music and everything set up in the ritual and this is how they set their day but then there was there was an accident that happened outside and so there was ambulance and there's commotion going on and outside and they were getting pissed like what the fuck why is this so noisy and it's messing them up and this and that and it's like they're missing the point of it like Meditation, yoga, psychedelics, all that should be the practice so that when actual reality is happening, you're able to to process, integrate, and, and work that. Like, you know, like you should be thinking, oh my God, like this ambulance is happening. Let me be more aware of it. Is, is someone dying outside or do we need to go and like help them? <laughs> you know, like, like <laughs> they're missing kind but of like also the point with, of it. Yeah, with like true meditation, you would want to, you know, be able to meditate through that, wouldn't you? That's kind of the the whole practice is being able to reach that state, even when there are distractions, even when someone's hitting you with a stick, or you know, like you were saying earlier, or there are loud sounds, or someone's trying to affect you, that you should be able to remain zen to enter that state. And going to this thing because I've been, I've been arrested and I remember reading this article one time and there's uh, Timothy Leary he talks about how when he first took, took psychedelics he learned more in that one trip than he learned ever at Harvard and, and all the schools that he went to and all the universities he went to he said and he said that even at that the first time he went to jail he learned a lot about himself society and everybody else and that and psychology by being in jail. And in, to a lesser extent, my experience with going to county jail here in LA, which is no joke, but it's this weird thing of that was probably like the mo the, okay, I was practicing of how to be aware, right? Uh, using this tool to expand my mind and to learn more about myself. And, and in turn learning about perception and learning about reality. And here I am in the worst possible environment with quote unquote, the worst possible people. And this this is no longer practice. This is an applied application. And how do I navigate myself through this? 
And even though it, 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 it wasn't fun, it was one of the worst experiences of, of my life. But at the same time, there was pockets of that beauty. You know, like I remember talking to this old veterano about life and then a couple of us that were new to jail banding together and then when we got released together the the guy got picked up by his sister and they they kicked down 10 bucks so i could get home and you know simple things like that like some guy hooking me up with uh some um extra chips just because we were cool with each other you know and even though i i saw a lot of weird and bad things and and experienced a lot of bad things, but I never, I didn't allow that to push away from the center that I wanted to be at. And you learn that every time you do experience these bad experiences and what that gets you in that tailspin is that you allow yourself for that to, to affect you in that way, um, in a very extreme way, you know. Uh, you could always be like, oh, it's someone else's fault, or oh, this is that, or this and that, and like, oh, this thing sucks, and it did suck, but at the same time, I learned uh, how to navigate a real bad situation and um, to make it out on the other end, and it's just a, kind of like this, uh, in a small sense, uh, like a hero, my own little hero's journey in a metaphorical sense, you know, I went into the Valley of the Beast and it's kind of the funny, my namesake is Daniel, right? And it comes from Daniel going to the lion's den. And I remember reading that story when I was little or hearing it. And then it's funny how these archetypes that we could tap into and that play out in our lives. And like, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying, you know, uh, integrating these different aspects. Like I remember when I, uh, took all, all those psychedelics at that one place. It was like I was accessing files, right? The whole human file system was available to me and I was able to download uh, certain things. But in a lot of sense, you know, in the background, these archetypes of what Joseph Camel talks in The Power of Myth play out all, all the time. And so I was playing out this archetype of Daniel going into Lion's Den and finding out that uh, these quote unquote, I mean, you know, there was legit crazy as fuck people that <laughs> there's, there's simply no hope for them and this and that. But at the same time, people are just people, you know, like as long as you don't have some physical, mental thing, uh, and it's just kind of like society and your environment and life. But essentially, if you go with uh, non-judgment and, and honest, being authentic, you could relate. Like, humanity happens peer-to-peer. -peer. And even in those situations, you can make a connection. You, if, if you have confidence in yourself, you can communicate and you can navigate through the worst of environment, the worst of things, and find that that beauty because I, I i honestly believe even in the worst of situation that beauty is, is still there it's it's always there re ready to leak out and now it might just be because i frame it that way <laughs> but that's my own little hat so i choose to believe that placebo effect of it oh yeah it's about perspective and i think that the deeper you look into mechanisms of reality the the more beauty you'll find even in the darkest of situations that you can view these mechanisms that make life the way they are or the way that things function in the universe that can still bring you joy that can still show you that beauty even in the most terrible of times um i've encountered a lot of really really crazy people um before but one of the most uh, this this woman had unrecoverable unfixable psychosis you know um that like you said like no hope for this person but instead of being like, oh, crazy lady, get away from me, you know, being just shutting that down and seeing the negative in it, um, I took the time to sit and talk with this person and just mostly out of personal curiosity, but I wasn't taking advantage of this person. I was just trying to dig deep into the reaches of her mind and her perspective on, you know, why she thought that way, why things 
um, entered her mind that way and just took a lot of time to discuss and poke around and try and step into her shoes even though they would never fit me in a million years just to try and grasp that and find beauty in that understanding of reality that she had. Um, but I've got to get going in the next 15, 20 minutes. So it's been awesome talking with you and I want to do this a whole lot more. So yeah, I'm going to send sure. you my schedule and we can plan out whatever works best for everyone and try and come up with something. 